In this segment, we're going to revisit Ironone and see how we might take all of the pain out of implementing it using modern C++ techniques. First, a recap. Here's an empty console app. Let's start with a COM interface that we might want to implement. Everything is going to be public. It needs a grid. For that, I'll pop over to the developer command prompt. and paste it in here. And we'll give the compiler an opportunity to optimize away the extra vtable. I'll call it ihen, continuing the poultry theme I started in my com courses here on Pluralsight. For now, ihen can inherit from ionone directly. Now ihen doesn't need to provide any methods, but that would certainly be a sad hen that can't cluck. Okay, so how do we go about implementing iHen? Well, let's take a look at the traditional or canonical implementation first, and in the next segment we'll consider what modern C++, C++11 and beyond can do for us. So I'll simply define a concrete class. I need to keep track of outstanding references. And I'll just kick things off with a single reference to keep construction simple. At this point, I don't need an explicit constructor or destructor, but the compiler will add a default constructor for me. Let's get the reference counting out of the way then. First, there's Ionone's addRef. And I can simply use the interlocked increment function to implement this operation. As you know, interlocked increment will increment by 1 the value of the references variable as an atomic operation. Most processors now provide direct support for such an operation, and the compiler typically treats this as an intrinsic operation. Adref should return the resulting incremented value, so this is really convenient. Then there is Ionone's release, which is only marginally more complicated. First, I'll use the corresponding decrement function. I'll hold on to the resulting decremented value so that release can return it to the caller, but first I need to determine whether the reference count has dropped to zero and the hen object may be deleted. Finally, I'll return the result to the caller. And then there's query interface, where we've got the most opportunity for innovation, but first the traditional implementation. The interface ID being requested, and the resulting interface pointer. First, I'll check whether the caller is asking for the iHen interface itself. And if I unknown is being requested, I'll return the same adjusted pointer, since an object's I unknown pointer must always be stable. Otherwise, I'll just return eno interface. Finally, assuming we get this far, I'll return a reference counted pointer. And we're done. And let's just implement the cluck method and then we can take it for a spin. And I'll just trace out the call. and return success. In the next segment, we'll take it for a cluck.